Today we're going to talk about great berry moth. Great berry moth is the uh, primary insect pest of grapes in the eastern United States. And the reason for that is that uh, the larvae feed directly on the fruit. You can uh, see here that it has gotten in and it started to chew around on the berries there. Um, as we get later in the season, uh, one larvae will start to feed on a single berry and then it kind of pushes back and forth and it can actually start to feed on three or four of them. You get loss from great berry moth through uh, berry weight loss from some feeding. You can get premature um, dropping or the shelling that occurs prior to harvest and um, rejection at the scale house due to too much berry moth in the load. Or um, one of the ways that, especially in uh, wine grapes, that we have a problem with berry moth is that it punctures the outside skin of the berry when it starts to feed, and that gives an avenue for the secondary um, diseases like sour rots, botrytis bunch rot, some of the other rot organisms to get into the berry, whereas if you have a healthy berry uh, where the skin is intact, it isn't able to uh, get in there. With the berry moth, we're worried about the feeding directly on the grapes. One of the best ways to tell how much you have um, is to do the grape berry moth risk assessment protocol. Risk assessment protocol is fairly easy to do. You're going to uh, decide whether your vineyard is a high risk vineyard, low risk vineyard, or if you can't really make up your mind, there's the catch all category of the intermediate risk vineyard. To classify your vineyard, you're going to look at the topography. Do you have wooded edges around? Um, is there something that uh, captures the berry moth? What the berry moth does, it'll pupate um, in the leaf litter. The leaf litter then blows with the prevailing wind. So if you have something that's going to catch that leaf litter on the edge, um, that will help to make it a high-risk vineyard. Another thing to look for is uh, history of great berry moth. If you have a history of great berry moth, even if you don't have the wooded edges, uh, it still can be a high-risk vineyard and also the value of the crop. If you have a um, premium wine variety, then it doesn't take too many berry moth to get in there to make it economically feasible to go in and put on an application to control the pest. So what we do is there's a scouting protocol that goes along with the high, the low, and the intermediate risk vineyards. With a high risk vineyard, uh, you're going to automatically put a 10-day post-bloom insecticide application on. Um, you're automatically going to put on a spray in early August to take care of it, and then you're going to go scout the third week of August, beginning of September, to see if you need future applications. With the low-risk vineyard, uh, there's no automatic applications. You're going to go out the third week of July and look to see if you have uh, enough damage to warrant an insecticide application in early August, and then you should be done. And with the intermediate-risk vineyards, um, it's kind of the catch-all. It allows you to go you know, one way or the other once you get a little more experience with it, uh, get comfortable with the risk assessment protocol. But you'll have um, immediate 10-day post-bloom spray you put an insecticide on, and then you won't put another automatic spray on, but we'll go out and we'll scout the third week of July to see if we need a spray. Um, in July, uh, during that scouting time, it's a 6% cluster damage as a threshold and the third week of August it's 15 percent damaged. To do the scouting it's very easy you're going to pick two sections on the wooded edge and you're going to pick two sections in the interior even though the berry moth has a definite edge effect in most vineyards uh, we'll still want to go into the interior just to make sure that we don't get those outliers um, where the berry moth haven't read the literature and they're going to be inside doing the damage there. So we're going to make sure that we scout the entire vineyard. We go to our first area and we're going to pick five vines along the wooded edge and that's going to be our first area. But we're just going to randomly select ten clusters and we're going to quickly look at the clusters. Typically you'll see where the larvae first started to feed and you'll have a nice purple um, stain around the feeding so it's fairly easy to um, spin the clusters around and be able to get the damage. One berry damaged is a damaged cluster. So pretty quick, if you see damage, it's a damaged cluster, you can write it down. You do 10 randomly selected clusters per vine 
for each of five vines in the first area. You'll go down and you'll do the same thing. You'll select a panel. You'll look at five vines, 10 clusters per vine, another 50 clusters. So it's fairly easy. You take the um, results from the first 50 clusters in the first area, 50 clusters from the second area. You add them together so you have 100 clusters that you've examined. If you have eight damaged clusters, eight into 100, you have 8% cluster damage. So if you had 8% cluster damage in July, you're above that 6% damage cluster threshold, you'd want to go and spray. If it's in this time of year, we're out here right now, um, the end of August, beginning of September, as you can see, the berries are starting to change color. We have a 15% damage threshold, and so we would be below the damage and we wouldn't need to spray. One of the things that we're looking at is using a parasitic wasp, Trichogramma ostriniae, which uh, Mike Hoffman of the New York State Ag Experiment Station, Cornell University, has uh, coined the phrase, it's the Genghis Khan of Trichogramma. Um, in the past, we have native species of Trichogramma out, in, but they never reach a population level where they're going to take care of the uh, berry moth just on its own. So we're supplementing it with uh, using the Trichogamma ostriniae. And what we do is we just have a card like this. Uh, basically, there is about 10,000 uh, Trichogramma inside this. They have laid their eggs inside a host egg and they're hanging inside this card. What we do is we'll take this card and the little rubber band that comes with it. We just loop it over and we're gonna attach it to uh, the top wire and then the trichogramma are going to hatch and they go out and they search for the great berry moth eggs.